Alrighty, it is the next day and I've got the two BC specials. I have them roughly shaped and basically I put this on my router just to establish the radiuses. This is nowhere near what it's going to look like in the end. But if I start the radiuses perfect, and you can do that on a router, then it's much easier to shape these with an already established radius and keep them that way. So I've got the two BC specials that I have not put on my belt grinder, my belt sander yet. I've got Abel's here that I have put on my belt sander. And I've got both of Ann's put on my belt sander. And now the hand work, the hand sanding begins. And uh, the reason I didn't get these to the belt sander part is because uh, this was my limit of standing up. So I'm going to be hand sanding on these for a few hours. Uh, before the day is, I'll, I'll get these on the, the belt grinder get them shaped up and ready for hand sanding so i may have mm, these three done today and those two tomorrow and then i've got a a caddo that sold but don't worry if you want a caddo i have another one uh, i have uh nick wants the texas rumble and uh harold is getting the bc special so i'll be working on these three at the same time when i get these five into my leather shop so uh Anyway, work is in progress. All right, there's Abel's knife, sanded. Uh, now I'm gonna go put it on a buffer. Incidentally, the knife that I sold, Pinhead Eric, that he said that had a finish glopped on it, was stabilized wood, and the only finish it had on it was being put on the buffer. It had no finish on it. Okay. Let's go, uh, let's go buff this one up and it will be ready for a sheath and then I'll get Ann's sanded and buffed up and see where, you know, where the day is on those two. Okay, this is uh, <clears throat> Abel's finish neck knife. Now the sheath is next and it will be the first sheath I make because uh, it takes less time to do Kydex than it does uh, leather So this is exactly how Eric's knife was finished on the buffer There's no after coating on it. And it's just wood and the buffer and His complaint was that there was no lanyard hole and Well, that's true. I've never put a lanyard hole on any of my neck knives never ever and You saw the picture you told me what you wanted in fact, you said you had small hands and you wanted the handles to be a little smaller than normal. I have that wrote down in the instructions. So uh, if you had asked for a lanyard hole, I probably could have put a small hole there with no uh, solid brass rod like this. But uh, you didn't mention lanyard hole. And my pictures, none of my pictures of these neck knives show a lanyard hole. I'm still bewildered. I'm still pondering what, what this guy's problem is. And it, I'm convinced that it just goes beyond uh, any, anything to do with a knife. I, I don't know what his sudden, why he would order a knife from me and then hate me after that. I, I don't know. Even after I offered his money back, you would not believe the crazy emails after I blocked him, that's when... See, he wouldn't answer my email when I offered him the money back on his knife. He wouldn't answer my email until I blocked him because he started leaving crazy. Well, the things he was saying were simply not true. Like the handle had some kind of finish clopped onto it, which uh, I'll show you the wood. It's a uh, spalted hackberry. This is my... Oh... Not my last, but it's my last big piece of spalted hackberry. It's stabilized. That See that BD? My name's Brad Dawson. And I sent these to have them stabilized. And they come back uh, with uh, impregnated resin. That's hard as a rock. I mean, so it doesn't need a finish. And when you buff them up, 
they look like like this when they get buffed up. See, this isn't stabilized because it's a hard, it's desert ironwood. You don't need to stabilize desert ironwood, although I have had desert ironwood stabilized. Oh, by the way, these are, you probably can't tell, but these are the stainless steel pins. And I think I'm going to transition to stainless steel pins as soon as I'm out of the brass. I like the stainless steel. So anyway, I know you're probably as sick of Eric as I am, but uh, I'm still just scratching my head, wondering what could have gone so terribly wrong with this guy that he had developed such an incredible hatred for me over a knife he was unhappy with but wouldn't take a refund for. I'm truly, 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 in my 60 years of living, I have never encountered any situation like this. It's just so totally bizarre and uh, I can't wrap my head around what, what all has happened. It's just so freaking bizarre. I went through a range of emotions. Shock that, number one, he would wait eight months to tell me he was unhappy with his knife. Two, that instead of emailing me and saying I'm not happy with a m knife, I want my money back, he left a comment saying that the knife wouldn't hold an edge. So in the comment, I offered him his money back. Uh, three... The next thing that just blew my mind was I offered him his money back and he wouldn't want it, didn't want it. And then he left a list, a novel, a list of all the things that were wrong with the knife and, and the sheath. The sheath was too tight. The knife wouldn't hold an edge. Uh, the sheath was too big. Well, I went back and I looked at the video of me making that and that sheath is only as big as it absolutely has to be to put grommets through. So that sheath is shaped and cut right up to the edge of the grommets. There's no possible way it could have been any smaller than that. So I, I am thinking, really, I'm thinking the guy just has some serious mental problems, which that's okay, that's okay. But why he chose me to vent this uh, mental problem on is beyond me. And Eric, you're, you're not allowed to comment on my videos, and I welcome your thumbs down, but the offer still stands. You have my address. You have my phone number. Uh, anytime you want your money back, I will send you $95 and $10 for shipping. Anytime. The offer still stands. All right, that's enough about that. I'm never going to mention him again. Now I'm going to start sanding on Ann's two knives, and I'll have these done in a couple of hours. And I'm debating on telling you a very long story that is almost as bizarre as that guy I'm not going to talk about anymore. But it involves some people that may not want to be public about this. But someday, I swear, I'm going to tell you this. It's just so unbelievable. I'll tell you who it involves. The crazy lady next door that gets up on her ladder and looks over the fence up at us. It involves her and a lawyer. I'll leave it at that for now. All right, there's one of Ann's. Now, now I'm gonna sand this. And I'll tell you what, my hands about had it. By the time I do this, I don't think I'm going to have enough hands left to sand these. So I'm going to do them tomorrow. And then I'll have five ready for sheets. And I'll start with Abel's. Let's see, what is today? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I will start on sheets. And Abel's will be the first one. And then uh, Ann's two. And then the two BC specials. But I'll be in the leather room. The oh, leather room. Friday. Okay. Uh, let me get Ann's other one done here, and we will uh, call it a day. All right, there is, oh, about six and a half hours worth of sanding and shaping right there. And they are done. Now they need their their leather jackets. And uh, I'll do those two tomorrow. I say... I'm not going to talk about that person anymore, but I just cannot stop. This is, 
It is the most un uh, ununderstandable. I don't. That's not a word. But uh, I just cannot, for the life of me, understand why someone would choose to be mad all these months instead of doing the 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 most logical and simple thing to avoid all that anger is just get a refund. I'm truly baffled and bewildered. And I don't know how to process that type of a person. I've never met somebody like this in my life. And I guess the shocking thing is I've lived, uh, you know, 60 years. I've met tens of thousands of people in my life. And I've never met anybody like like this, this bizarre, whose, whose personality is that messed up and, and logic and lack of proper thought process. Uh, you know, it's so illogical to not ask for a refund when you're, you know, so unhappy with something and prefer to be mad. It, it's, yeah, I can't stop thinking about it. I know you're probably tired of hearing about it, but I cannot stop thinking about this person. I, 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 I've just never met anybody like that. I don't know how to process this type of person. It's a totally new thing for me. And, you know, I've been all around the world with the Army and uh, all around uh, our country and in Canada at, for almost 35 years with trucking, and I've met a lot of people. And I've never met anybody that chose to be mad for no reason at all. Okay, <laughs> see you tomorrow. Uh, and tomorrow I promise I'll try to not think about this anymore. And, uh, you know, he's not occupying a place in my head. Now, it's gone beyond the person, Eric. It's the thing, the choice, the action, the psychological place that his brain must be in that uh, would make him choose this. You know, choose anger and hatred and venom and uh, just all the bad feelings instead of the most simplest thing to uh, take a refund and get that horrible knife out of his life. Okay, see you tomorrow.